This video was made by a six-month-old baby. AI has been advancing at a blistering pace. In 2016, Google's machine learning algorithms were having trouble identifying photos. Now we can create images that don't exist from scratch. A couple of days ago, a man submitted an image generated by Midjourney to an art competition, and he won. It was the digital arts category, sure, but it sparked a rightful backlash. A lot of people argued that neural networks like Midjourney undermine art because the images they create are ultimately devoid of the same meaning made by humans. I used to agree with this idea, and I kind of still do, but only to an extent, because the more I think about the boundary which divides AI images from true art, the blurrier it seems to get. And I've been thinking a lot about this, so I'm making this video to collect the arguments on both sides and explain why I kind of feel like this is art. For whatever reason, arguments about trivial things seem to elicit so much more vitriol than political ones. When I see Matthew Iglesias spit a completely unhinged take about how Biden is the second coming of Jesus, my reaction is, oh, you silly guy. But the moment I say that Pixels is a good movie, all of a sudden I'm banned from Letterboxd? So if you do disagree with my points, I implore you to leave a comment with your thoughts. Just please do not call me slurs. I don't enjoy it. Art, at least in my gut, needs two things. It needs to say something about the world, and it needs some sort of authorial intent. Surrealism would not have existed had Salvador Dali not been absolutely strung out on fascism and drugs. It existed because of unique individuals with unique perspectives. Wikipedia kind of agrees, declaring that art involves creative or imaginative talent expressive of technical proficiency, beauty, emotional power, or conceptual ideas. They also say right below that that there's generally no agreed upon definition, but whatever. I want to show you a couple of drawings that I made. For our first picture, we have a skull. I used colored pencils and pastels on paper. It was part of a larger series of pictures I made for an art class centered around growing up and growing old. It won't be put in a museum, but it represents the easiest and most palatable form of art. I had a vision, a vision with meaning, and I put that vision onto paper. No frills, no gimmicks. Here's picture number two. This one was made on my computer with Photoshop and a mouse. This is also pretty uncontroversially art. While I did use a computer to make it, I had full control over the composition, color, everything. Another picture, this one also made in Photoshop. The original version felt kind of flat unrealistic and boring, so I enhanced it with AI. I ran the picture through Photoshop's in-house neural network, and it gained a sort of realness it didn't initially have. This may be where you begin to disagree with me, but I still think this is art. The fact that I used AI as a tool didn't make it any less a product of my mind. Here's the fourth and final image. I call it DKKILPRB. As you can probably tell, it's a bunch of colored squares. Everything about this image is randomly generated. Both the name and colors were generated by a randomizer. But going off that initial definition, DKKILPRB is still art. I made it with the intent to put random pixels on a canvas. It also has meaning, albeit shallow. I wanted to question the boundaries of what we consider art. It's not high art, but it is modern art, and as we all know, you can't spell modern art without art. You also can't spell it without Mo, like Mo from the fucking Doodle Bops. Remember him? O M W, on my way to you. Good at what I do. Now that's what I call art. But I didn't make D K K A L P R B, at least not entirely. The outcome of the final picture was determined by the website I used to generate the colors and the algorithm that website relies on. But I also picked the website, the number of colors I used, the shape of the canvas, and the number of letters in the title. All four of these images were created by me, but the amount of control I had over the composition decreased with each iteration. I arranged every part of that skull, but by the time we reached DKKILPRB, I didn't even have control over the color. Ultimately, whether you consider AI images as art depends partially on where you draw the line, where you believe the artist loses control over their composition when a tool stops being a tool. 
When I asked my friends about this topic, the majority of them said they felt AI images were not art. And their main argument, which is a very sensible one, was that AI alone does not have intent. It can only regurgitate its training data. It may succeed in tricking the eye, but it lacks the meaning that human art implicitly contains. It's not making a statement, it's just math. But it isn't though, right? Because AI images aren't just random. They're the result of a prompt, of a person telling the AI what to do, guiding it in a specific direction. In that way, there is someone at the driver's seat because the human prompted it with an endpoint in mind. But that can't be right either, because just telling someone to make something for you doesn't make you an artist. You can have a vision, commission an artist to make it for you, but that doesn't make it your art. It's ultimately the product of the artist that painted it, not the person who told them what to paint. You're not going to end up on the placard next to the canvas. And AI can't think. So if you're commissioning AI, there's no artist. And if there's no artist, then that means it's not art, right? Right? And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Can art exist without an artist? And there's no objective answer, but it's something people have debated long before robots could make art for us. To some people, like Martin Heidegger, an artist is not necessary because all art attempts to capture truths about a world that exists independently from the artist. In his words, the artist remains inconsequential as compared with the work, almost like a passageway that destroys itself in the creative process for the work to emerge. They're conduits. If you agree that there is some sort of spark that all artists struggle to channel, then we're done here, right? AI images are not art. But maybe there is no magical spark. Sure, AI regurgitates the information it has in its database. It can't create something entirely new and unique. But neither can we. Just like AI, we can't create things that legitimately don't exist. We can't imagine new colors. We can only interpret the world that already exists in increasingly absurd ways, which is what neural networks do too. That's kind of a bleak note to end on though. Like, is it really true that all humans are really good for is spitting up different versions of the world that already exists? I don't know, I guess that's up to you. But if you do believe that, there is still a bright side. Only humans can interpret art in the way that we do, can find meaning in things that don't have any. Art does not need an artist to exist because where the meaning in art comes from is malleable. The reason I love modern art so much is because the meaning arises not from the artist, but from the people who view it. You can see one painting and draw a million different conclusions, whereas realism just shows you what already exists. Art historian Jean-Paul Senard wrote about this exact phenomenon, writing, When looking at art, we depend overwhelmingly on the presence of an artist's name. At least I do. Not looking at the wall label is the hardest thing. Yet do we not feel a strange sense of relief when the label is missing? Standing there, the image or object becomes more mysterious, more elusive, more questionable. We feel closer to the work of art without the artist there, as if we might have created it ourselves. Beginning with art, rather than the artist, returns us to the poetry of art. A banana taped to a wall by a modern artist is no different from a banana taped to a wall by a janitor. Either way, the meaning contained in that banana is generated by the people who view it, because there's no meaning in a banana by itself. In that way, AI images are art, because a person can view them and apply meaning in the same way we apply meaning to all nonsensical art. As long as there's someone to look at the pictures and draw their own conclusions, then art will never truly die. So yeah, that's my opinion. Um, I know I'm kind of arguing in bad faith because it's like my gut still tells me that like AI art does lack some things that man-made art has. That being said, I believe that in a couple of years this will become normalized to the point where we questioned why we even debated it at all. Or I could be wrong. Maybe this is going to go the way of NFTs and I'm just completely wrong. Whatever. I know things sort of devolved into a poorly argued philosophical mess towards the end, and that's because I really just wanted to get my thoughts out. I'm sorry. I mean, as you can tell, I haven't come to a conclusion about this topic, and I'd love for you guys to, you know, input your thoughts. 
I might make another video in the near future about the political implications of AI because I know a lot of people's main gripe with AI image creating websites is not that what they create is not art, but rather the fact that it's stealing people's jobs, which is probably a much more relevant concern. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry if this was a bad video. Bye. Come.